But 9-11 was the trigger that resulted in Muslims saying, we need to make ourselves known and we need to transition from in-reach to outreach. The first uh, institutions that opened their doors to us were the faith institutions, houses of worship. They wanted to know us, we wanted to know them. And from there on, it led to interfaith dialogue, starting with houses of worship, but into places like libraries, academic institutions, uh, nonprofit uh, groups, particularly many of the women run, uh, run groups. And we started with the premise that we have more in common than what divides us. Um, finding commonalities was a aha moment for people of all faith. Uh, we did not know that Mary is mentioned in the Quran, you know, just, just as a, uh, one example. And that happened at two levels. It happened at the clergy level, uh, imams talking to the priests and uh, rabbis, and it happened at the grassroots level, uh, homemakers, moms hanging out on the sidewalk, talking with their Christian and Jewish neighbors about why she can't have coffee today because it's Ramadan. And oh, by the way, is kosher and halal the same thing? And in schools with children. Children, we got our children and our youth engaged in our interfaith activities so that they had some control over their destiny and they felt empowered and they fe and they knew how to communicate with uh, their peers. So that started off with having interfaith holidays in houses of worship. You know, we would do a Seder, we would do an Iftar, we would do a Christmas, and then it transitioned into having annual feasts and then doing things throughout the year, finding an excuse, let's walk through an ethnic neighborhood, uh, let's uh, um, celebrate a national holiday of one of the ethnic groups, um, let's learn how to do calligraphy. So something was started happening throughout the year, which exposed Muslims to the broader community and, and vice versa. We formed study groups, Quran, Torah, Bible study groups, which are still continuing, learning what's in the scriptures, uh, exposing our uh, uh, scripture to, to the broader community. And eventually, this effort led from meeting in public places to meeting in the living rooms, to huddling around the kitchen table, getting to know one another, having advocates who then became our friends and then became our ambassadors and our allies. And that served us well. Those relationships that we built then served us well when we went into the 2016 elections. And so do you think that, you know, 20 plus years after the events of 9-11, things have changed now, those ties are more deeply embedded, the ties between the diaspora and, you know, people who've been uh, living in the West for much longer? Absolutely. So an example of that is that when the 2016 election took place, uh, Candidate Trump had been saying, I am going to establish a Muslim registry. And people of other faiths stood up and said, if there is a registry, we will register as Muslims. And that issue just went away. People don't even remember now that that was ever a concern. Uh, when he instituted the travel ban, the Muslim travel yep. ban, people from other faiths landed at JFK that evening. Uh, it was a Saturday evening, and as soon as Sabbath were, was over, the Jewish people ended up in the airports, and people were sitting on the hard, cold floors on that February evening on their laptops processing the appeals of the people who were getting detained at the airport. The uh, ACLU, the Civil Liberties Union, filed uh, a case in court, and people just surrounded us with their love, whether it was through emails or whether it was through phone calls saying, we are with you and we're gonna support you and we're gonna fight this together. They uh, not only stood by us, they educated us and mentored us on how to deal with this situation. So it was very comforting to see how much support there was in those difficult times. And it brought those bad times brought out the best in people because they stood up for the rights of their fellow Muslims. On a Sunday in Times Square, my husband and I, when we walked in there for a rally, people by the hundreds were standing there with posters that said, today I am a Muslim too. 
except that they were not Muslims, but they had come there to stand in support for us. It was a Sunday. They could have been anywhere on their day off, but they came to stand in that cold day out in the open because they wanted to support us. And I was shocked, to, not shocked, but pleasantly surprised to mm. see a lady in a wheelchair, 90 years old, could barely lift her head. And she was sitting there amongst the crowd. And I wondered about what it took for her to get there. Physically, that is. But she was there speaking very loudly by her silent presence. And that, that went... Beautiful. Yes. Yeah, and it went both ways because not long afterwards, with Islamophobia rising, anti-Semitism rose. And now it was time for the Muslims to stand up for their fellow Jewish Americans. They did fundraising, they wrote letters, they were out, you know, leading uh, uh, the, the protests. It went both ways. And those are the moments that brought the communities together.